means birth. Uh, I understand that um, Krishna never takes birth and never dies, and he is only appearing in this material world on this day. So appearance day makes sense. But uh, why did they... Can I continue? In Sanskrit, why was it called Janmashtmi? Well, Krishna is never born and never dies, right? But he appears and disappears. So in his human-like pastimes, uh, he appears to take birth. Uh, in other words, uh, his mother appears to become pregnant and then like that. But actually, it's described in Srimad Bhagavatam, how Krishna appears in this world, is that first he appeared in the mind of his pure devotee Vasudeva. And then he was transferred to the heart of Devaki. Doesn't say anything about womb or anything like that. And then uh, he manifested a form that looked like a human baby. Uh, but then as soon as they began to offer prayers to Lord Vishnu, he appeared in a Vishnu forearm form. And then they requested him, <laughs> please then uh, go back into your baby form so we can protect you. <laughs> See, Krishna's mother and father are very advanced devotees. In fact, it's described in their previous life, their names were Prishni and Suttapa. Prishni and Suttapa prayed. They did uh, severe austerities and for a long time and prayed to have the Lord as their son. So in the next life, they appeared as Vasudeva and Devaki. And then Krishna appeared to them like that. So we can understand that these devotees who are acting as the Lord's mother and father are very, very special. They're not ordinary devotees. Uh, but they're, they're devotees who have earned the Lord's trust. And because they are of their intense love for him in the parental rasa, vatsalya rasa, then the Lord agrees to appear as their child. Actually, of course, Krishna is nobody's child. He's the supreme personality of Godhead. <clears throat> but he agrees to play that role in order to relish these sweet, loving pastimes. So, uh, Krishna is uh, very, very much inclined towards his devotees. Bhakta Vatsala. Huh? Bhakta Vatsala means he's very much inclined toward his devotees. And he, uh, he makes all kinds of special arrangements and concessions for them. Uh, for example, we talked yesterday about how he manifests a different form just specifically for the uh, particular mood of each devotee. It's no problem for him. He has unlimited resources and powers. You know, it's not a strain. <laughs> but uh, those devotees who want to worship the Lord, for example, in opulence, in awe and reverence, according to regulative principles, <clears throat> for them he manifests his Vishnu form and they go to Vishnu Loka, uh, Vaikuntha Loka. We see a lot of this in India, huh? where they're worshiping the Vishnu form, the forearm form, often with Ananta, the, the snake, you know. Uh, I have to translate for because there's so many people who don't know. So uh, Sheshanaga is his, his Balaram expansion on the Vishnu level. You see, on, there's Krishna and Balaram. And then... There's Lord Ramachandra and his brother Bharata. You see, and they're the same. And then in Vishnu, uh, in Vishnu Loka, Balaram, the first expansion of the Lord, manifests as Sheshanaga, the thousand-headed snake, who is his umbrella, his seat, his bed. See, and in the, uh, even in Goloka Vrindavan, Balaram manifests as all of Krishna's paraphernalia. His clothing, his flute, his weapons, 
his his bed, his worshipable, worshipful paraphernalia, and so on. So all these things are different manifestations of Godhead. Even on our level, you know, Krishna manifests right now as his picture, or as Gornitai. But all of the paraphernalia, the altar, the the worship, even the flowers and the decorations, everything is Balaram. See? He's the original guru. He shows us how to glorify the Lord, how to worship the Lord. So the whole setup of the altar, all of this is, is consciously created to help us develop devotion. Huh? It's not just some nice arrangement that somebody dreamed up in their head. This is something very much... Uh, uh, specified in Vedas. I mean, if you ever saw the book on how to worship the deities, it's about that thick. Hari Bhakti Vilas. Uh, it contains thousands and thousands of instructions. Uh, so we're only implementing a very small fraction. Just the, the standard for home worship. Uh, it's a very, very uh, simple standard. Um, just a few ingredients of worship and like that. Uh, but in the, in the prison cell of King Kangsa, Vasudeva and Devaki, they didn't have anything to worship the Lord. So they simply offered their very beautiful prayers and their love, which is what Krishna really wants. Huh? So they immediately, even though they, they recognized that, oh, this is the Lord, and they prayed to him like that, then they immediately went into, it's, it's described that Krishna expanded his illusory energy, yoga maya. He has yoga maya and there's maha maya. In the material world, the illusion is called maha maya. But in the spiritual world, it's called yoga maya because in the spiritual world, everyone is in contact with Krishna. See, so Krishna expanded his yoga maya energy and then Devaki and Vasudev said, oh, please manifest your baby form again so that we can protect you. They wanted to, they, they, you know, it was, okay, enough of this formal worship. Now let's get on with the real thing here. <laughs> so they, uh, again, were overwhelmed with this loving sentiment or rasa in the parental mode. And so the Lord agreed to become their little baby. So they all, uh, uh, Krishna had put all of the guards to sleep. Huh? He has a special weapon. Huh? And this, this weapon manifests any time that we have uh, deep classes on the philosophy of the esoteric teaching. Huh? And everyone begins to fall asleep. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I've even seen people giving a class fall asleep. <laughs> Krishna. But anyway, uh, that's the Lord's special weapon. Uh, so he made everybody fall asleep, and magically the locks all opened, and Vasudev just walked out with the little baby in his arms, baby Krishna. And uh, of course, because it's the beginning of the monsoon season in that part of India, then uh, it was raining, pouring down rain. And the Jamuna River was very much flooded. So to get from Matra, where the Lord appeared, to Vrindavan, you have to cross the Jamuna River. So how did Vasudev cross the river? Ananta Shesh came and became his umbrella, Vishnu's umbrella. And the waters parted, and he just walked across the river. So then what did he do? He went to Vrindavan. And just coincidentally, <laughs> Mother Yashoda had given birth to a baby girl. But after giving birth, she was so tired, she just fell asleep. Uh, and so Vasudev sneaked in and exchanged the babies. Like that, and then he went back to the prison of Kangsa and put everything back the way it was, and then they sat and waited. Of course, this, uh, this baby girl wasn't any old baby girl. This was Yoga Maya herself. Uh, so um, the morning, 
everybody woke up and they could understand that uh, Devaki had given birth to a baby girl. And in Vrindavan, everybody thought Mother Yashoda had given birth to a baby boy. So, everybody was fooled. Only, the only ones who knew the truth were, were Vasudeva and Devaki. So, uh, everybody woke up and the news went to Kangsa and then Kangsa came down and uh, just like he had killed all the other children of Vasudeva and Devaki, he tried to kill this baby girl too. But she was Yoga Maya. So she slipped out of his 